it's a fun track. They get, they worked it in really nice. So they, they took their time and they got it together. And it's uh, you know we've never this is the steepest uh, track we come to with the highest uh, highest banking. So it's a uh, it's a little different to get used to used to that. It kind of it's so small it, you, you almost get dizzy out there. You just gotta try and pick pick your head up and look down the track and uh, keep your momentum up through the corners. It's definitely gonna be a momentum game tonight. Yeah, it's been kind of a rough year. I mean, every time I finished, I finished in the top five. It just uh, we, we had a, an inch and go at, at the Springfield mile. It put us a little behind in points. And then last weekend, we were involved in a horrific crash, the scariest one I've ever been in at the uh, old-time Newsies event in Dayton. And uh, just a, a few guys got hurt, and we're just hoping that uh, Nick Cummings gets better soon. My brother's out with a broken ankle and a broken wrist. And, uh, you know, I got lucky not to break anything. But, you know, I'm definitely a little beaten, banged up. I got some uh, I had some stitches uh, on my nose uh, last week and just got those taken out. My arm's a little swollen up. But, uh we're going to tough it out. We're going to try and get some points, hopefully get on the box tonight and make up for the uh, the Springfield Mile uh, blow up. Starts. And where everybody, well, there he is. He's going to be third down inside him, Joe Kopp, and then further inside still, Brian Smith. So in the order that they qualify, they get to pick their starting spots. On the outside, Kenny Coolbeth Jr., the number one. He might have the shortest distance down to turn number one if he gets a good start. Bit of, a bit of a ritual as they shuffle around trying to find where the traction is and then pick their spot. Everybody's hunkered down over the bars right now and waiting for the starter signal, and there it goes. Good start out of the 43, Halbert, and he's going to get the shot from near the outside of the front row. Cool bat slots in behind him. It looked like Brian Smith got a good start, but might, maybe missed a shift or something there because uh, he went from the front to about fifth, fourth, I guess it is. Sammy Halbert out in front right now with the bright blue and green leathers on. And he has found the fast line around this place here tonight. No question about it. Sammy Halbert on the 43 leading this one and starting to pull away ever so slightly while the rest scramble around behind trying to find out what's going on. Still banged up from last weekend's race at the Old Time News. He's, he, he's out front. He's not showing a sign of it at all. Oh, adrenaline is going to cover up any aches and pains that might be left. Jared Meese. He's found the handle down on the low side. He's making up ground in every turn. Then he pushes a little bit wide and loses it again on the exit. Well, you know, they had a bunch of rain here, and it's changed the character of the track. You can see that. Whoa, Sammy, come back. Jared Meese takes the lead with a little mistake, a little bobble there by Sammy Halbert, and over on the outside flying Brian Smith, making it a three-way battle up front. Cop, try, or Coolbeth, rather, trying to make it four. Yeah, Halbert just slid it up there on the oh. from the inside to the outside of Meese, and it is a little slick out there. You see him struggling with traction. Well, Jared Mees throwing the back wheel inadvertently at Sammy Halbert. They're all fighting, finding holes, finding dips. Even chatter bumps are starting to develop, almost like braking bumps on asphalt. Three different lines coming off the corner, and they all fall in line down the very short straightaways. Yeah, I can understand how Halbert said you're going to get dizzy in this place. Yeah, and it looks like we've got uh, the lights are on, yellow flags hold out, someone has fallen. Yeah, and hands are up, and A.J. Eslick is down on the racetrack, not sure if anybody else was involved with him. He was near the back of the feet. Well, Sammy Halbert seems to be the man to beat, but Jared Meese, Kenny Coolbeth, and Brian Smith and the rest may have something to say about that yet. Track Twins Grand National Championship, and we're going to restart this one with Jared Meese, Sammy Halbert, and Brian Smith lined up in that order. There's Kenny Coolbeth on the number one. And you can see the staggered start is a new deal this year. Yeah, I think it's a good idea because if somebody has a, a makes a mistake or stalls the bike, you don't run directly into the back of them. You have a little bit of a chance to get out of the way. And Mies gets a whole shot, followed by Halbert, and it looks like Coolbeth. Well, there they are. These three guys figured pretty heavily into the action early on. Naturally, they started up front on the restart, and we would expect them to be part of it here. Here is... The number 42, Brian Smith, in fourth position. He's trying to get up there and make a battle out of it as well. But Sammy Halbert looks so comfortable on this racetrack. Jared Meese just fighting in front of him. And uh, they're both looking for traction on two slightly different lines. Meese getting smoother there as uh, Coolbeth starting to get gapped a little bit. He's trying to stay down low. The, the, you know, I think it's instinctive to try to take the short way around the bottom of the track. It is. It's called pole putting, Brian, and it's the easiest way to get around, but it's not always the fastest way, especially if you're on tracks uh, like next week in Lima where you got a cushion. There you go. Up high on the cushion this is the fast way to go, but experience will teach you that. Not only the experience of a lifetime, but the experience of just the evening of racing. Up front, though, good battle for the lead. Jared Meese and Sammy Halbert fighting 1-2, and then third and fourth behind them is another man-to-man -man battle. We see Coolbeth down low and Smith up high again. 
difference in lines makes the track exciting makes the race exciting to watch cool beth just throws that thing in there gets the back end hung out front wheel going the direction he wants to up front two very similar styles and now even a similar line being run by these guys nobody's uh, all over the racetrack like the race for third and fourth look how different it is for third and fourth whereas the front two guys are staying in line yeah smith on that michigan high line as they call it up there high <laughs> Lots of good dirt trackers coming out of Michigan. The Michigan Mafia, a name that was given to them as a group some time ago. Brian Smith, one of them, of course. Well, Kevin Atherton is one of the uh, pros at running up by the hay bales. It used to scare me to watch him. I don't know why it didn't scare him. Well, you know, these guys ain't scared very often, are they? Look at Halbert take a low line, capitalizing on a little mistake by Mies. Halbert waited a while. If he was thinking about using that one, and here comes Mies back on the inside doing the same thing back to him. Oh, there's nothing in it. They're right beside each other coming out of the corner. This is some great racing, Brian. Oh, these guys love to battle, and they love racing like this as much as the fans do. You know, they get off the bikes, and they're just as excited as people in the grandstands. Well, I saw Smith uh, still using that high line. It's starting to get a little bumpy up there for him, but he's he's sticking with what he got, riding up there high. Oh, Mer Jared Mies almost into the back wheel of Halbert. He holds on. All three of them keep going. Kenny Coolbeth trying to find a way around the two up front. And you know what? If they get any closer than they did a minute ago, he'll get an easy road to the front. Oh, that was looked like another major moment there for Halbert. Take another look at this. Inside goes Mies. And how do you do back inside comes Halbert. Oh, classic dirt track passing right there. And Coolbeth doesn't have that number one plate for nothing. He's there waiting to see what happened. Maybe he can capitalize on something. Well, he's going to have a hard act to follow with his performance at Springfield coming from the back of the field to eventually take the win after Smith was disqualified. Still scratching our heads a little bit over just how that happened, but nevertheless, Kenny Coolbeth carrying that number one plate proudly, looking for another win here. He's looking for a way around Mies, I'll tell you that. And there is Halbert taking a little bit of an advantage. Mies riding now somewhat defensively against Coolbeth, who's trying to use that low line. Mies is going down there, too, and really shortening up the corner. He closed a lot of ground on Halbert coming off that last turn. Well, if those two battle too much, it may play into Halbert's hands, but they've caught back up on his rear wheel. It's a three-way battle for sure. Brian Smith, a somewhat distant fourth. He, too, trying to find a way up there. Halbert just keeps railing around just a little bit higher as Mies tries to cut him off on the inside. Well, Halbert's shutting the door on the exit. Playing it just right. So Sammy Halbert, that is, look at that. Look at his elbow down on the straightaway. He's got his wrist full cocked on the throttle. Then he's throwing it up in the air as he backs off the gas going into the turns. And then he hunkers down on it one more time. He's probably stretched an extra inch into those throttle cables. His mechanic's going to wonder how that happened when he gets back. they got to make those things out of tough stuff because these guys are strong and they'll pull on it as hard as they can. Inside goes Mies again to take the lead. Here comes Halbert back across his wheel to get it back again. You know, Jared just, he goes inside and he can't maintain it. The bike drifts high and, and Halbert finds a way underneath him every time in that corner. One and two. Around they go again. First three have left everybody else in the relative lack of dust here tonight. This track is holding up beautifully. Yeah, it's got some holes, ripples, and bumps, but it's sure not dusty. No, it's in great shape, and it makes for great racing. And, and I'll tell you, the riders love it when they get that. And the fans love it when these machines are moving around as much as they are right now. You're kind of hanging on the hairy edge of disaster all the time as Mies goes inside, taking another look at Sammy Halbert paying him back. Here we come back out to the three leaders once again with Halbert, Mies, and Coolbeth in that order. And they've run off from the rest of the pack for sure. Yeah, it looks like a three-man match race going on right now, and that's essentially what it is. These three have just figured it out better than everybody else who's left to fight for what's left. Sammy Halbert, though, from the beginning of the evening, seems like the guy who's been keeping up with the racetrack uh, better than anybody else. Here's Brian Smith. Holding on to fourth position, although he's got lots of company behind oh, him as he's, well. He's running way down low, Brian, from where he was running earlier. He must have figured, he must have got a little tired of that high line or found that it wasn't working because he's not there anymore. He's decided to go pull putting himself, I guess. With him are Weedman and Chris Carr. That's fourth, fifth, and sixth. White flag is out for Sammy Halbert. He's got the biggest lead of the race so far right now. Mies is going to have to really pull something out of his hat if he's going to challenge on this short 3 8 mile lap. Well, he picked the perfect time to pull away from the other two guys. And Sammy Halbert is going to get up off the deck from uh, an injury, a, a race that injured his brother and Nick Cummings as well. You can't write this stuff in Hollywood. He comes back from being hurt to win the very next race. Sammy Halbert.